Yeah. So, you know. If they want to. Welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Moosey. And our guest is Aton Edwards. Aton, good to see you again. Thanks for uh, having me back. Great. Yeah. Welcome uh, back. It's yeah. all these that. difficult things Definitely that are happening, though. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. At this time, right, because we're talking, of course, about disasters and about mm -hmm. what's going on now. Um, and we've just been in crisis right. mode and are still, for many people in the New York area and in New Jersey. Yeah, it's rough. I mean, people are suffering right now. Right. Um, especially in, like, Red Hook and in uh, Far Rockaway and then also in Coney Island. Right. And, well, uh, as somebody whose power was out for five days, I can tell you... You lost your power for five days? Yes, and it's not fun, and we had the least of it. You know, wow. so many people have it worse than we did. And, but just from having that experience, I can tell you it's not fun to be cold and dark and lonely. <laughs> you know, yeah, people apartment. are finding out. Now, tell us, uh, um, what, what did, what did um, New York do wrong? You know what, I think that... What could we do right? Well, first of all, there were certain things that weren't put into play, like those giant plugs that they could have used, like the NASA and mm -hmm. a couple of other What do you mean uh, by agencies. plugs? Well, th th uh, several years ago, there were mm -hmm. plugs, giant... Look, sure. They look like cotton plugs, just giant plugs for the subway tunnels oh. that would actually block the water, the water from, from surging through in, the tunnels. Yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. They, so they could have done that. They couldn't deploy it. They didn't have them ready. They didn't um, seem to have them ready. They seemed to be unprepared because they were telling people it was only going to come right. to Zone A, and it came all the way to Zone 3. You know, zone C. Uh, if there's anything that I would say to the, the, the OEM, the Office of, Emergencies, uh, Office of Emergency Management, it's always better to err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. And so you always should take steps that exceed whatever you might mm -hmm. think that could happen. Sure. And many people thought they were doing that by closing things down the day before. I mean, I heard a lot of people saying, oh, this is much ado about nothing. Why are they doing this? Mm -hmm. Remember Sunday? Yeah, they right. tried to the make it. Day. A lot of people felt yeah. that it wasn't going to be that big of a deal. But it's always, when a hurricane is, in, is coming, it's always a big deal. It always is a big deal. And you can't underestimate the power of an, a hurricane. And the thing is, is that so, I mean, the city has a limited amount of resources, uh, lots of people, and uh, unusual uh, terrain. So that there's some of it, you know, there's a large harbor, the largest in the country, of course, uh, one of the largest in the world. And then you have beach communities, you have all this stuff. So it adds up to it. It's a recipe for disaster. And of course, in New Jersey as well, and Long Island, right. and all these areas that were exposed well, to the ocean. Tell us a little bit about where you've gone in your travels, because I know the minute something like this happens, you're one of the first people to rush in to help. Yeah. Well, my first was Red Hook. Okay. okay. And, you know, because I'm very familiar with the area, so I went out there and kind of assessed it. And um, I was really shocked, you know, to see, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, the you know, see the power down. It's not so much the physical damage. It was just like everything was shut down. I heard stories about the water surging in the people's homes. Um, one particular person in, um, uh, on Van Brunt Street who said that he was up to his neck practically mm -hmm. in water in his basement. And, um, you know, the, the power of the water, the, the surging water was incredible. Right. I saw basements torn up. Uh, people's the foundation of people's homes ripped up. It was it was as if something a great big hand just came and swept you know itself across uh, some of these buildings. And then the, the power outages, um, the damage, the infrastructural damage. It was really really astounding. Mm -hmm. And um, you know and the people were kind of shell shocked when I first went out. They were still kind of like you know sure, like what the, on earth, the, right? the the people who lived on the ground floors suffered. Not only damage to the infrastructure of their homes, but even things like their clothing. It was, you know, because the water in Red Hook, a lot of it comes from the Gowanus Canal. Oh, wow. And, the, you know, the Gowanus is like pollution. extreme amounts of pollution. And uh, so the clothing was lost. A lot of personal stuff was lost, you know, furniture, things like mm -hmm. that. And, um, and, and, you know, I kept going back. And then you just started to see the change come in. One of the things I noticed is that a lot of what you'd think would be there in terms of FEMA and people on the ground, they just weren't there. They didn't have the force that they need to deal with all of so the folk. Right. Right. You know? So what and about the role now? I just was watching on national news. NBC News had a feature story about Occupy Wall Street taking over uh, massive, am efforts, ma massive yeah. amounts of recovery efforts and, and there being no federal authorities there. They showed all these signs on NBC News FEMA office closed for bad weather, it actually said. Uh -huh. And then they went to right, the churches the and they saw yeah. all these Occupy Sandy folks out there helping out. So, right. The so Occupy it, what does people. What represent? Well, it represents the 
truth. I mean, I can tell you, having uh, been with uh, Director Fugate mm -hmm. at the FEMA headquarters last year, and Director Fugate was of FEMA, He's of the FEMA, the director of FEMA, and he told me very bluntly, "Yes, we just don't have the resources to deal with these disasters." Now, also, we have to mention the Rainbow Family because, of course, they're yeah, the setting Rainbow up family. kitchens as well, right, as well and helping right. people, yeah. and as they did at Katrina. So they're well, always at a yeah. disaster, too. Let me tell you this. The Occupy people did some incredible stuff. I was watching them delivering food and supplies, going with, carrying boxes, going from project to project. If it hadn't been for them, quite honestly, we would have sustained more casualties. Right. Right. Because they, people they were bringing food water. up the stairs. They were yeah. running food up the elderly people who were on the top yes, floors of tall in buildings. High rises, right. Of course, the elderly are stuck. Mm -hmm. There's right. so our disabled people are stuck. Right. right. So There's people are going there, and I noticed a number of people were telling me they had friends and roommates. Uh, Charlie Beal told me his, his friends and roommates were going and actually volunteering as runners and sure. running food up and up down. 18, 20 flights yeah. of stairs. Absolutely. That's right. That, yes. that was like the true heart and soul of uh, really decent New Yorkers to do some of these things. It was incredible. And what, what was also incredible, considering the amount of tax money that's mm -hmm. been pulled down from people's pockets, to not see the kind of governmental effort that would be needed to deal with What this. do we get for the taxes that people pay? Right. right. You expect to get something. And we've helped other areas. Yeah. And I'm sure other areas want to come and help us. But and are here helping. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So what, let's, let's talk for a minute about uh, what should people, people were caught unawares. They had, were rushing to find flashlights and batteries. They were, uh, you know, you've done, a, you wrote a book, an incredible book, uh, yes, Preparing Now. Mm -hmm. yes. What what did people, what mistakes did, did we make and what should we do better next time to be well, prepared you, for this? Well, you're talking about individuals. Yes, uh, or each because family, each person. I have to say that influenced by a time, I was better prepared than I would have been if I hadn't talked with you on the show and gotten your book and read it, so. Oh, well, that's good, right. you know. Yes. What I, I can tell you is, is that people underestimated things. People tend to uh, underestimate what, you know, these things when they happen. They, they tend to kind of like diminish what could happen yes. because it makes them feel better to right. say, oh, that won't happen. It won't go that, that far. Right. And again, you've got to err on the side of caution. So if there's any mistake that I can tell that New Yorkers made is that they underestimated just how destructive and what the destructive potential of something like this is. What should everybody have in their house? They gotta have an emergency water supply, they gotta have an emergency food supply, they gotta have emergency first aid, they need radios that are hand cranked so that they can, yes, you know, no batteries yes. so that they can stay on top of information. Sure. Um, and you also know, in a hurricane, I mean I'm from New Orleans so you're, you should fill your bathtub with water because if the water goes out, you will not be able to flush your toilet. You will not be, you know, it takes a certain amount of water to do that. But there's also, there's a, there's a dual thing. Sometimes if you don't have some, you know, I, I had to speak about this in another program, that when you have to flush the toilet, if you're using good water to flush the toilet, you might need that good water. Right, you should be using, you, saving like the water you use to wash You need with. to save what do they have? What do you do for a toilet under those circumstances? You can use kitty litter if you need to. I mean, because again, you can just isolate the stuff and you can put it and bag it just the same way that your cat does, a bucket and kitty litter. You just basically cover the solid mm -hmm. wastes and right. then you can store it and throw it away. Right. Because you, you don't know how long you're not gonna have water. I mean. Right, and it's that basic sanitation is so crucial. This yeah, title. sanitation. And uh, you know it's just a it's just a huge log logistical nightmare to kind of deal with this. But New Yorkers did the best that they could with what they knew, but they underestimated the power of this thing. And and what they've got to realize is it's not going to be the last one. Well, we were also lucky this time because as some of the national news stations were calling it a tale of two cities, that if you were ambulatory, in other words, if you could get out of your house, you could walk to Midtown where they had electricity. Right. That's a very different situation than what if all five boroughs completely went and, out. And that was very unusual to walk from 42nd Street to 34th and see that change, especially at night where you had one city which acted as if With nothing was happening. And, and, yeah. Life was going on as normal, and then you'd walk two blocks over, and it, it was disastrous. I think The Daily Show made a humorous uh, joke about but that. But you could also walk the other way, so that people who were healthy and could take a hike could walk up to Midtown. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge, huge difference than not having that available. To yeah, you. that's the thing, though. You know, I mean, really, at this now we see the vulnerability, first of all, of the electrical grid. 
Um, we know now that it's quite vulnerable, as you mm -hmm. described and you saw the explosion. Right, we saw the, I saw the explosion on 14th Street. Street. It's only a couple blocks from where I live, filled yeah. with the sky with light, and it was a kaboom. And then literally seconds later, everything went down. Yeah, so, and then we also see that when the transformers go down, they can't be repaired. They have right. to be replaced. It yes. takes a while now. And so you know, do all the boilers, because even when you dry out your basement, those boilers all have to be eventually replaced. That's right. The, the corrosion starts the and they salt the stop. salt water. Also, Correct. there's no excuse for the power plant going because my dad, who's been a guest on the show, is a power engineer all his life. Mm -hmm. And I was discussing this with him, and he said, Why did they build it next to the water? Why right. did, was it, it, yeah, 1821, but their job is not to say, oh, there hasn't been a flood since 1821 that high. Yeah. Their job is to say it never happens. That's at right. All. And it, there is no excuse. But even more frightening is that 22 miles away from us, sitting in Buchanan, New York, is Indian Point. Right. And, and we, yeah. if we had sustained a flood, keep in mind that the, the, the type of reactor we have at Indian Point is the very same type of reactor. That's a uh, Fukushima Daiichi in right. Japan, mm -hmm. and that kind of a flood, as the NRC has recently stated, that reactors are susceptible yeah. to meltdowns because of severe flooding. Right. So this could conceivably have created a catastrophe similar to what happened in Japan. And in fact, four <coughs> nuclear power plants in the region lost power because it turns out that a nuclear power plant needs to be connected to power on the outside. That's right. Separate from the power oh, it so generates. Oh, so the electricity went out. All mm -hmm. those they power plants, mm -hmm. well, they started, to start, they started to go into that mode that power plants go into where, you know, history is made and fortunately they luckily shut them down Yeah, this they time. have to, they, they shut didn't the mistakenly down. make a mistake like at Three Mile Island and switch the wrong switch or, right. the, you know, it's when, when things, unexpected things happen with a nuclear power plant, the, the, uh, the room for error it's like, is yeah. right. tiny. And, human yeah, you, and human <laughs> error is really could cause a disaster. You know? Yeah, and they could have, uh, could, you know, that kind of a situation creates another situation, like what you said, the human, uh, you know, error thing comes in, and then you wonder if, uh, you know, we've dodged a bullet. Yeah. And um, so, again, New Yorkers now have to just take the responsibility and recognize that they have got to have a strong and solid preparedness plan and program. So Each proactive. individual. Yeah, right. And proactive preparedness means like being like anti-nuclear and closing down nuclear power plants around. Yeah, stuff proactive like preparedness. we got to shut down Indian Point. It's too close. And what does someone carry with them constantly? Like what would be a small go bag that you should have with you all the Your time? Your personal kit. That is right. a little mini flashlight. <laughs> yeah. I got this baby the other day. It's beautiful. It cost me 12 bucks. It's worth it. Oh, what kind did you get? Let's see. It's a... Uh, That's nice. Yeah. Oh, well, Fenix. Good. Fe good. Yeah, good. Good, good. good brand. We don't want to promote a brand. Yeah. yeah, well, you have a good, you, well, need, a good too, yeah. you need to carry a flashlight. You need to carry a small multi-tool. I'll never be caught away right? from a flashlight. You need a whistle. Mm -hmm. Why? Because sometimes you need to call for help, and yeah. sometimes yelling isn't going to do it. You need a you lighter. You yell yourself mm -hmm. out. You yeah. know, you need a small yeah. lighter. You right. need, a, when, I, when I say lighter, you should also, you know, like a little lighter, you need some stick matches, you know, the usual thing. Right. Some cordage. Right. Even if it's like a, what, 550 pound test mm -hmm. cord, cord, okay. or um, model that filament be so cord. Incredibly useful. Yeah. You'll find like 20 feet of cord mm -hmm. wrapped up in a bag is a useful thing. Yeah, just to, to tie it away. So yeah. You might have to tie something down, you might have to break something. Yes. You know, you need to carry around a small personal survival this kit. This is all the time. Oh, I see. Yeah, what all you're the time. All not the time. something not the that you go back like, from home. Right. No, the go back As from you're home. you're always ready to go, right? I'm oh, yeah, I don't have my uh, go bag on me, but I always have my personal like survival a small kit. kit. Right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I always carry that at all times. I'm always I always have a flashlight, I always have a multi-tool, sure. I always have a whistle, I always have some cordage. I even have a little tiny small mm -hmm. roll of duct tape that oh, you can okay. get at a hiking store. Right, right. I always have something that I can purify water with. Mm -hmm. And I always have a toothbrush and I always have some toothpaste. This, now they make those straws that right. you can use the and you can straws. actually drink water out of, a, out of the gutter. Right. And it'll pur purify it. And as you long as live. it's not salt water. Okay. You know, um, you can use the life straw. Life straw is the best in okay, the world for that kind of thing. Of right. Life yeah. straws are made by a company called Vestigard Finstrin and they also, they make them for uh, developing nations mm -hmm. so they're great and uh, they work very right. well and you know have that you can also get trail like straw filters that they use them for trails they don't but the thing with the life straws it can filter uh, 1,000 liters of water yeah. you a know, lot of it oh, that's a lot last that's right. last you for a year how much water does should you put in your house and have ready one gallon of water per person per day that's why I was saying that when you talk about the bathtub mm -hmm. um, you don't know how long you're gonna ha not have the water so you yeah. may need that 
Yeah, you may need the bathtub full of water. So the thing is, is that, yeah. you know, it's really important that I, you... I know uh, you have to go early. You have to uh, leave us because you have a... But tell, can you take a minute to tell us about what you're doing with National Geographic? We'll talk about your... Anton um, Edwards here is a great survivalist. He has to leave early because he has a very important meeting coming up. So tell us a little bit about well, what... Well, National what Geographic doing. has uh, the show Doomsday Preppers. And, and speaking of Indian Point, we did an episode about Indian Point. Oh, great. And how do you get out if you had to? So, in fact... Uh, someone else that you know, his name is Cameron Moore, uh -huh. and Cameron Moore is a guest, oh. and we basically showed Cameron how he'd have to get out of New York if there was a meltdown uh -huh. at Indian oh, Point. Wow. Give great. us a hint. What's the where do you go? What's the first place to head? Uh, well, he had to head to the Hudson River. I can hit. I can tell you that. Right. Because well, see how he did. We have to go wait for the National Geographic special to come out. Yeah, you have to wait for What's that. What's it so called? It's called uh, Doomsday Preppers. And our episode is called Escape from New York. Great. Okay. And so and it's going to air. air yeah. um, it'll air, I think, in early December. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, tonight we're going to so be right meeting with time. all the people. Yeah. And see, the thing is that your show has got to also pipeline information mm -hmm. and to continue to pipeline information to the, to the viewers. Are there websites or anything you can tell people? Sure. People can go to my website, readyforanything.org, and then they can go through and if they need resources, yeah. they can go and check out the resources on readyforanything.org. If right. you need assistance, disaster assistance, disaster loans, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of things. I have a listing of a lot of the stuff uh -huh. that they need to get hold of. Sure. But New Yorkers have got to develop really strong and sound preparedness plans because this is not going to be the last disaster. Okay. You know? the, uh, global warming is the main thing? Global warming, everything else, is still the, the, attack, the specter of terrorism, military attack, right? terrorism. Earthquakes, as yes. we had. Yes. And um, we live, and then of course is the this, nuclear Are threat. these the end times? Uh, why, is, what's, why is this all coming together now? Do you have any theories on that? Yeah, I just think that, you know, eventually it's going to happen. I just think it's a matter of circumstance. So it's like flipping the coin enough times you're going to hit it. Well, the more variables that you introduce into an equation, the more complex the equation becomes, right? Yeah. So we didn't have all these variables 100 years ago. We didn't have a nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. We didn't have all these people. We didn't have this extremely mm. large infrastructure. Sure. So we have more variables, and the more variables you have, eventually you get to a point where everything, the points converge, and then you have problems that create more problems that create more problems. So we're at a point now yeah. where we're in that mix, so we okay. just have to kind of learn how to ride it out. Last thing, the toxic effect of this stuff. Bad. The biggest thing I want to say to the viewers, you got to watch out for the rubbish because there's asbestos in a lot of it. Especially don't, don't if you live in Brooklyn. Now. Yeah, so don't go through people's garbage no right garbage now. This is not right. a good time. Because yeah. I know there are going to be a bunch of people with mesothelioma mm -hmm. because they've been in their basements mm -hmm. filing through uh -huh. all of this stuff. And, you know, the truck we have behind us was si sitting underwater at the entrance to the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. And if you look closely at the picture, you'll see a multicolored rainbow hued slick that's just covering that entire huge amount of water. And they just uh, uh, sucked a lot of water out of the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. And um, what does this... Uh, you know, wh where does this stuff go? What are they doing? Yeah. Do they just dump it into the ocean? I mean, yeah, really. So it's you know, just really back into the system. Back into the system, back into the food chain. So, you know, so we have to make sure that you keep your work up. And, uh, and hopefully I can come back again soon and finish it. I wish that I could stay longer, yeah. but yeah, I but got to go. Definitely come back again. Right. Thank All you right. for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great.